They're good, those little guns, eh? Oh, yeah. I've got one like that, too. Or is that mine? No, this is yours. <laughs> Mind you. There. Save me changing the fitting. Oh. Well, I better get back at it. Yeah, you better. Tons. On a freaking deadline. Lucky there's no hockey games tonight. You'd be long gone. It's one on TV. <laughs> was it the water pump that was? No. Oh. <laughs> I just checked the weep hole. I just checked the weep hole. It's not plugged. So basically, if the uh, internal seal hill was leaking, it'd come out the weep hole, and it's not. So, and if it was plugged, you'd see a trace inside here if you pulled the water pump off. So the water pump's good. That just means we gotta dig deeper in the engine to find a problem. So it's either the head gasket or a liner. Liner seals. Could also be the air compressor, but that's highly unlikely. We wanna pull the head off just to see what the cylinder shape is like anyway, so. Okay. So we'll keep digging. At this part of it, I don't really like standing close to the motor. Between the oil and the coolant mixed together, they're just, it has a bad odor. Brad's working at right now, pulling the fuel lines off, the internal fuel lines that are coming in from the side of the motor, going to the injectors. I'll remove the valve bridges here. Now we'll pull the uh, nozzles out. There's a special tool that goes down into these holes here for the hold down cap. We have a homemade puller to pull the uh, injector nozzles out using an old wrist pin or piston pin. the smaller head bolts. A certain sequence to torque the head. Start from the middle and work your way out. Three hundred 
35 foot bounce. All right, we're ready to pull the head. That's good, that's good, Phil. Ah, nope, just a sec. Let me get a pry bar. I'll break it loose first. Okay. Easy, whoa. Keep on going? No, I just gotta get it off the dowels. Okay, just go up just a bit. This forklift's really jumpy. Yeah, I see that. It's not the operator. Okay, up just a bit. Whoa. Okay, up just a bit. Pardon me? Up a bit. Up. Up. Okay, go ahead up. Is it balanced enough? Yeah, it's not bad. We'll use the overhead to put it back on. Better control. Okay, down. You want it more towards you? No. Yeah, towards me. I'll just move the... Yeah, I'm shifted all the way over. Yeah. Okay, down. Okay, back up. Good. Is that good? Yeah. There's a mouse in here. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of crosshatch left, Phil. Know what I mean? Mm hmm. Looks in good shape. I'll have to lift that head up and pull the gasket off so I can take a look at it. Want to do that now? Might as well. Up. That's it? That's it. What I'm looking for is any discoloring in the fire ring, mm -hmm. right around here. That'd be signs of a compression leak. Doesn't seem to be any, eh? No, it looks okay. The proper way to do this would have been to uh, pressure test the cooling system while the engine was in, pull the oil pan, see where it was, look underneath and see where it was coming from. Oh, I see. Whether it was a liner seal or... Now, how would you do that pressure test? It? With, there's a special tool that you just pump up and you pressure test the cooling system. Oh, okay. How many pounds would you put into it? About 15 pounds. See, that's where I would put 100 pounds into it. <laughs> Just to find the leak that much quicker. Yeah. Because you're on a time uh, frame yeah. here. <laughs> and if it wasn't leaking before we started, it should be when we're done. 
Yeah, this is okay. Hmm. So that could be coming from a, uh, the liner seal. Liner seal. Yeah. Oh, the seal or a liner? Nope, a seal on the outside of the liner. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can see them from in here. There's the liner, the outside of the liner, and there's a seal right there. There's three of them in a row. Okay. So those seal, there's coolant all in this passage. Right. So basically it's going past those seals and it's dripping right down into your oil pan. Hmm. Can you just maybe just grab your flashlight and show me that? Yep. Here's the outside of the liner. And there's coolant all around the outside of the liner. So what's happening here is there's three O-rings on the bottom here, one, two, and three, and they're going past all three O-rings and the coolant's dripping into the base. So that's where this problem is probably going to be, I suspect. But this actual cylinders itself are in really good shape. There's lots of crosshatch still left inside here. That's a sign that it's been overhauled once before because I think there was quite a few miles on this, eh? Mm-hmm. Over a million, yeah, on the truck itself. They said it was done. I think five hundred thousand ago. Five hundred thousand kilometers. Yeah, that looks great. There's no way that was that. Think that was that cross hatching stay for five hundred thousand kilometers. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. We pulled them apart like that before with eight and nine hundred thousand kilometers and put them back together just because the liner seals were leaking. Now, and that's from proper oil changes, you could, uh, to save your... I would say that would be the inferior cat product myself. <laughs> Possibly you shouldn't be saying that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's uh, regular maintenance for sure. So we'll leave it up to you whether... Uh, you want to in-frame it or not. They still all have to come out anyway. They still all have to come out to reseal the uh, outside of the liners and, and make sure that that is the problem. We'll be able to tell. But at this point, to get the warranty, I have to... If you want, yeah, for sure. If you want the extended warranty for the overhaul protection plan, whatever mm -hmm. they call it, you'll have to in-frame it. <laughs> 